Welcome to this introduction to Seed Code Complete. This is our newest unlock template, and the solution that we're using is the foundation for new projects. And it's a framework that's designed for you to build out from, whereas our pro calendar is more for folks that want to add a calendar to something they already have. Seed Code Complete takes that calendar, but then adds a fleshed out contacts, projects, and invoicing system. And uh, I'd like to show you a little bit of that. Um, so let's go jump over to the calendar first. You know, our last uh, version of Complete was kind of about layouts, right? We made layouts that were beautiful, but difficult for the average developer to make. Easy for them to modify, but difficult for them to make. This version is more about behaviors. So you can see the layouts are still here, but let's, let's talk about some of these behaviors. So some of these you may have already seen um, that are in the pro calendar, right? Like drag and drops. So if I move this event, it moves up. If I want to see these two more appointments here, I can drag this down and I'll, I'll reveal those and I can put this back up. Um, this version introduces a whole other set of behaviors that are really about your productivity as you're working with FileMaker. So um, let's take a look at the first of those. It kind of involved, uh, involves the new Gantt chart. And this is new to Seed Code Complete. And you can see that on the Gantt chart, we have projects and phases. And I can open and close you know, individual aspects of this and, and move the, the Gantt chart around. But we've also taken a look at like what do you really need to do when you're on the, on the Gantt chart? And what you need to do is kind of work with your active projects. So we've created this little list of active projects that kind of augments the filters that are already here and lets you work just within you know one project so we're talking about behaviors let's look at these little chains here see how these items are linked together so that if I if it takes me longer to prep this item I'm just gonna hold down the shift key while I drag it out to the right here that's gonna cause our delivery date to move so I'll probably need to unchain this move the delivery date back and arrange to get this work done more quickly that's the kind of behavior we're talking about when we change one thing, other things in the database change. But how did these milestones get here in the first place? Well, let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at a project a little earlier in its life. Let's look at um, the Blaine's here. So we're just going to call Doug about the offsets. I'm going to hold down the shift key and jump over to this project and um, move over to the schedule tab. You can see here this is the only item that we have here. So let's pretend this is done. I'm just going to hold down the shift key and mark this done. And now I've talked to Doug and he's decided to uh, give us a 50% down payment so we can get started. So let's see what happens when we do that. I'm going to say paid 50% down. The software says, hey, would you like to add the milestones that reflect this new status? And I'll say sure. And you can see that we've set this up. This is user configurable. That when something happens, we're going to cascade some new events onto the calendar. We're going to say, yeah, we paid this, mark that done. And now I have to do the sketch up and some elevations. I want to see a little bit more here. So I'm going to see this little sidebar arrow here. I'm going to click this and it'll get that sidebar out of the way so I can see a little bit more about what's going on. I can move these dates around. You can see some of them are already linked together. And I can go view that out on the Gantt chart, kind of see what's going on here. And then if I clear the project filter, I can see this in the context of the other things that I have to do. We're pretty excited about this. These kinds of behaviors are, are really important to making sure that things don't fall through the cracks. I mean, that's what calendars are for. Uh, and that's what databases are really good at. Um, let's jump back to that project and show you something else. Let's go back to Blaine's again. I'm going to hold down the shift key. Let's click on recent and refresh. And you can see that when I did that, when I changed that status, I've notified my team. We have a little audit log here and we're looping through the audit log to record new events and new things that are happening. And I also sent an email notification. So we have scripts that are prepared to do that for you and you can turn them on. They run both server side and client side. So if you're not using FileMaker Server, you can still do that. Let's take a look at that email. There are two people on the project, myself and Bill, and that's we should have both been emailed. Cool. So here's our FileMaker notification. It was sent to Bill <laughs> with his fake email address and to myself. And we've included this little snapshot link here so that somebody who didn't have FileMaker open could just kind of jump right to this project. So we're pretty excited about this. Um, this is definitely the platform that we're using for new projects. We're excited about how easy it is to modify, how easy it is to take the email notifications that are in there and add them to new actions and new attributes, and how easy it is to configure these behaviors that happen when a, a contact status changes or a project status changes. Thanks for checking this out. Uh, please download the demo and dive in.